I have a question for you guys. Where is that modern audience? Where is it? Because I have a piece of my mind to tell them. I have to do it in person because I would be violating all of the social media TOS while I would have a word with that modern audience because it keeps demanding crap. Over and over, we see different IPs coming out saying that, oh, we're going to make this for a modern audience and it ends up going bankrupt. No one wants it. The modern audience doesn't want it. I, I want to have a conversation with that modern audience. Whatever happened with making a timeless game? Is that even on the table at this point anymore? That is, is any company being ambitious? Ambitious, I love that word. Is there, is there a single corporation in the United States left that is ambitious in creating a product that's going to be timeless? Do you think Beethoven, when uh, he was composing music, he was doing it for a modern audience? Or was he doing it like, no, I'm going to put my soul in, and my heart into this art and it's going to be something that people will want to listen to whatever happened to that oh now it's modern audience which is code name for being woke as in the company will save money by hiring some nobodies that are going to be in charge of writing the story so that they don't have to pay an actual skilled and talented writer and these nobodies they manage to get the position because of ideology so we're probably going to see a game where you're going to have to save the immigrants from evil Ron DeSantis that tries to ship them to Marta's Vineyard. Then you're going to have to sneak on that plane and liberate those immigrants and escort them to a friendly military base. That's probably what we're going to see in the game. Right? I, I mean, the main problem is that the game had Muslims as the enemy and we can't have that in a progressive game for a modern audience. Right? Like we're going to have white people as the enemy and people of color as the hero and the protagonist. Which, by the way, you're not allowed to point in any reviews. Because I keep seeing reviewers that go like, oh, it's not the race that's the issue. Because you're not allowed to talk about race unless you're on the far left, right? Like, unless you go like, oh, my cisgender, white, heteronormative, patriarchal, cis, blah, 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 blah. Unless you go like that, you're not allowed to talk about race at all, right? Unless, unless you go, it's like, oh, uh, too many white men in video games. It's so tiring, right? Like, unless you do that type of commentary, you're not allowed to talk about identity politics at all. But it is actually getting tiresome. It's immersion breaking. Like, when, when I watch a progressive movie or when I play a progressive game, I know who the bad guy is just by looking at the skin pigmentation because I know who's writing these stuff. You know, like, uh, it, it's the same where if you see someone with an iPhone in a movie, spoiler alert, it's a good guy. I bet you didn't know that, did you? It's because Apple, the company, doesn't want bad guys using their products in movies because they view that as bad advertisement. So no, seriously, like I'm, I'm not making this up. Like whenever you see someone using an iPhone in a movie, you can know for sure that that is not the villain of the story. And it's the same thing with things that are written by progressive people. Like if you see someone of the correct identity politics, you know that chances are they're not a villain. Uh, maybe they are, but they're misunderstood or they're a complex character. But it's exactly like Elon Musk pointed out about Lord of the Rings. Every single mail written by progressive writers is either cowardly, incompetent, or evil. And look, it's just immersion breaking and it's tiring. Because at this point, like, even if you were to create an interesting story that happens to have a villain that's a white guy, I'm like, so inundated by all these other stories that, that it's kind of cringe at this point. You know, because I, I know that the writers do it out of balance. They don't do it because they just want to write something interesting. But, you know, like, this is my personal take, which I shouldn't say, by the way. Like, you're not allowed to say, because every single other commentator, I notice, they're, like, avoiding this topic like the plague. And instead, they're focusing on other things. So let's just focus on other things. I personally do not care about the story in Splinter Cell. It's one of those few games that I literally do not care about the story. Because when I played Splinter Cell, I knew nothing about world politics. Nothing. And I was a Romanian. I was even completely detached from American politics. So for me, Splinter Cell is just a game where you have to stealth around. And that's literally all I want. Like, it's one of my favorite games, and all I want is the gameplay. Please give me that. Like, please. I, I don't care. Like, do whatever you want with the story. You can replace Sam Fisher with a strong woman of color. I, I don't care, okay? It would still be a game that I would buy. Like, look, 
for one in a one time deal. I, I'm gonna do this to you. I will buy this game no matter how bad the story is. But the only thing that I'm asking, the only thing that I'm requiring is for you to have good gameplay. Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you make it a good stealth game? Probably not. Because again, when companies are pushing a game for the modern audience, what they are saying is that they are hiring new faces. And when you are hiring new faces, you can't expect those people to make products the same like people who have been in the street for 20 years. And the problem with the people who have been in the industry for 20 years, they require a lot of money to be hired. They require fat contracts. So companies just want to avoid them. And then instead they're like, oh, well, we're, we're promoting diversity. So we're hiring new people, right? It's like oh, diversity. Oh, well, we're not paying them as much. Oh, just for some reason we're making, uh, we're, we're saving a lot of money by doing this. But shit, shit, shit. No, it's all, it's all about the modern audience. It's all about being a uh, progressive company. And by the way, like, um, when you say that games are made for modern day audience, but what it really means is that you're not going to get jokes like this. Grimm's Doctor, Maria Narcissa, Fisher, you're not trying to set me up on another blind date, I hope. Grimm's Doctor, the Maria Narcissa is a boat. Fisher, so was the last girl you set me up with. Fisher, sorry. Right, so this is now considered the sexist joke, it uh, spreads patriarchy around the world like uh, the, the COVID plague. Right? You, you can't have it for the modern audience because the modern audience is very fragile. It's very delicate, like a flower. But my point is that this sexist joke, which existed, it remained in the mind of uh, Ryan Andrew for years. Like it was such a good joke that for years he remembered it. So now he can connect the joke to the brand. Right? Like every time he thinks of that IP, he thinks of the joke and vice versa. This is good for a business. This is good for a company. Like you want people to remember the product that you made so that they can purchase the sequels. So that they can recommend it to others. But you're not going to have something like that. Now, I don't know if there's any progressive jokes, like woke jokes from, I don't know, Steven Universe or whatever you know, modern audiences watch this day that are timeless and people remember them over the decades. I don't know, but like what I do know is that this worked. This is a formula that worked, and this is a formula that's probably going to be removed. But again, as I mentioned, I, I, I generally don't care about the story. My expectations are so low, I'll just, just press escape on all the cutscenes. Escape, escape. Just mute the game, put some rock music on the background, and then I just want the gameplay. So tell me, chat, do you think? Do you think that they will just do the gameplay? But that's the only thing that I want. Literally, just, just that. You know, a stealth game. Can they do it? You know, can they make a stealth game? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments section. I'll see you guys there. And there's a, a tip jar if you want to consider helping the channel out.